So this morning on the patch notes, I see some pretty big potential changes, more than 200 items reintroduced to the game. I don't know exactly what items they're talking about. Maybe their weapons and armor though. Armor values and prices overhauled as well. And no, they nerfed the execution axe. No, I'm just kidding. They did change this lamellar over leather though, I believe. I'm pretty sure it had way more body armor, but less leg armor and arm armor. And by way more, I think it was only like actually like seven more. But I do actually prefer it this way because I've noticed you can get hit in the leg and it can literally take out all your your HP. I guess maybe if your leg gets like chopped off in combat then yeah you could have kind of a problem there. The studded imperial neck guard also has less body armor. It was at 20 I believe but now it has 14 body armor, 7 arm armor which again I do prefer this. More protection on the arms is always nice. The lordly padded mittens actually were nerfed though. These were supposed to be giving like I think 30 arm armor and I'm pretty sure these woodland boots were nerfed as well. They only give 12 leg armor though maybe all boots were nerfed. And yeah Ira's only give four leg armor and these were giving like I think around 20 to 30 but her rough tied bracers are actually really good still 30 to arm armor I'm gonna be yoinking those one thing I also will notice is the value of these lordly padded mittens went way down the value was I think 1500 before so yeah that was just a fat nerf to these things and I guess what happened is maybe the lordly modifier was giving it too much armor because I guess padded mittens are really low tier and whoa these imperial studded strip shoulders got a buff I think they were only giving like what was it 11 body Body armor before and they give 16 body armor 8 arm armor and alex chest piece is actually better now too i think at least it gives more leg and arm armor now and holy cow so i was checking out amatatas to see if they have any new goods and these lamellar plate gauntlets cost 11k and they only give two more arm armor than these rough tied bracers and what's funny is these plated striped gauntlets give eight less arm armor than our rough tied bracers but they cost way more so what i'm guessing here is they did not see these rough tied bracers or something because either they should have nerfed their armor cost or they should have buffed the price of them because yeah 309 does not seem like the appropriate price not when two more arm armor is costing you 11k in the last episode we completed all the quests we had but there's this main one investigate Narisi's folly that we got to do where we got to talk to the rulers of 10 factions and this one's kind of dumb in my opinion it's literally just a walking simulator quest but as far as i know we have to do it if we want to found our own kingdom at jelmeris there's a rival gangs quest where we have to come back in three days to do the quest but i don't know if we're gonna be able to make it back in three days because we got stuff to do we can leave him six troops though and a companion and we're just gonna leave him our crappy empire peasants along with our crappiest companion Meniclus a robber and I think they'll do the quest for us. They also have an escort quest that we can do and if we did have a companion with scouting higher than 50 and leadership higher than 40 we could just have a companion and nine men do it but unfortunately we don't have that so we're gonna have to escort the caravan ourselves and ooh, here's a fat amount of looters I'm not sure if this is because we're escorting a caravan or if this was just by luck but yeah with both of them together there's 25 of them we could have also to take them on in separate groups but why do that when we can just take them all at once we shouldn't lose any units here i'm being pretty aggressive too i'm tanking like most of these guys wait did we just lose a mercenary scout there yeah. oh that sucks oh and i think we just killed two looters at once yeah, that was two looters with one sling. I didn't even actually know you could do that. That's really cool. And oh no, we actually lost a mercenary scout. That's like, I think 350 or something for that unit. They did have a lot of empire peasants as prisoner though, who do end up upgrading into mercenary scouts. And actually speaking of upgrades, this imperial recruit has enough XP to get a level up. We're gonna turn him into an imperial archer because imperial troops actually upgrade into these imperial bucolaris. And they're mounted, which is great. In my opinion, there's a reason why it's called mountain blade. Basically mounted units are really strong. One of our mercenary scouts actually also got an upgrade to a mercenary mercenary horseman which is great that's gonna give him a lot more armor and a shield which is gonna dramatically increase his survivability because yeah as you saw we just ended up losing a mercenary scout to those crappy looters although I'm not complaining too much they had a lot of loot and ooh, another sumter horse we currently have five in the party but we can always use more sumter horses our caravan made it to Artesia where I just realized that these wrap shoes we picked up from the looters are better than these woodland boots from the forest bandits and man they did those forest bandits dirty as these boots were way better 
better than anything the looters had. But yeah, I guess we'll be using these wrapped shoes, which, yeah, they don't look like they're giving more armor. The woodland boots even look way tankier. I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe these wrapped shoes are wrapped in like mithril or something. I don't know. And Ira the Wanderer's fine town boots are so bad now. <laughs> Maybe these fine town boots were only made initially to be worn around town. Well, looks like she's getting some wrapped shoes as well. I'm also seeing at Ortizia, they have my new favorite weapon, the Executioner Axe in stock. We're going to pick one of those up for Bylorn Break Skull, and he's going to be breaking some skulls with this thing. We'll give her as a war razor to our horse archer, Ira the Wanderer, who is really good with two-handers. She's just not going to be using them until she's out of arrows, and then she did have this hoe, but... She's now done with the whole life. This Cataprax Mace also seems like a really nice upgrade for Alex Coldbiter as it has really nice length on it. Almost 30 more length than the Calrotic Mace that he was using and I'm pretty sure when people are on horseback you want to give them the longest weapons you have which ordinarily would be a sword but Alec has a skill that gives him 10% more damage if he's using a mace. I was also noticing another weird thing with pricing. This Light Royal Mace is more expensive but it's worse in every single way. So yeah, that's a thing. With that though we'll solve the rest of the random goods we picked up from the looters and we got 690 for that plus some upgrades so yeah it was definitely worth it to take on those looters earlier and apparently we got the rival gangs quest finished i didn't see how much money we got from that our troops and medicalists all made it back in one piece though so that's cool we didn't have to go pick them up not sure how they managed to do the quest and then also find us on the map but we won't question it and there we go we got the escort quest done we got 600 for doing the escort, so that was worth free money. And speaking of money, we're now up to 3700 and this guard's kettle over mail coif is looking pretty nice. Especially because I just noticed they did nerf the imperial open mail coif. It now has only 14 head armor. I'm pretty sure before it had like 20. And yeah, we're going to pick this up for the main character. We'll give over this open one to Alec Colbiter. And you're really telling me that this thing only gives one more head armor than this northern rough hide cap? It's freaking chain mail versus... What is that, like some kind of leather? Whatever, not gonna question it. After dumping off the caravan, I ran to this guy, Yorig of the Forest People. And this dude's clan, the Forest People, is a minor faction, meaning that if we do attack him, I don't believe we incur any diplomatic penalties. The only thing is he has 60 troops, whereas we only have 37. And a lot of his troops are archers, which could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how good they are. Oh, and we're out of throwing weapons. Now we just gotta go in and, oh, okay, we're already down. Absolutely no fucking chance, holy sh**. After dumping off the caravan at Sargot, we headed over to Jackland to look for these guys' faction leader. Just so we could ask them about the quest, we ran into this guy, Samir of the Forest People. This dude, much like Yorg of the Forest People, who did butt blast us earlier, is part of the Forest People minor faction, so no one will care if we attack them. Side note, I wasn't expecting to win that battle earlier, or even show it, but I did want to see how strong they were, and if it was even possible to take him and his 60 units out with their current loadout. As you saw, it was definitely not, but this dude does only have 17 units. They do have 17 units and I believe all of them are archers. I think that's the forest people thing. And ooh, that was a nasty headshot. Um, these archers look pretty good. They have decent helmets and that's one down. Almost two down actually. Hit that guy in the leg. Oh, got him. Three for three on these throwing weapons and oh yeah, this guy running. No, he's just trying to get a better position. They're not running yet. Ooh, 33 damage. Ouch. He's not paying attention, headshot, and these guys are running. Save yourselves, yep, you're gonna be dead soon. And there we go, we won. We got three renowned for that, and we only ended up losing a couple Empire Peasants and a Looter. But we did end up capturing Samir of the Forest People, on top of a bunch of his units as well. These veteran foresters are tier 5, and they have 200 bow skill. These guys are really good archers. On top of the prisoners we just picked up, they had two barbed arrows, so we'll give one of those to Ira. And they had a bunch of random gear, as well as four horses. We're definitely going to keep all these horses in our inventory, as it is confirmed each horse does increase our movement speed if we have foot soldiers. Because, yeah, right now we're moving at 5.31 with a plus 0.3 bonus for footmen on horses but if we sell off just this desert horse that does move our speed down to plus 5.27 so it's not a huge difference but it does add up for the most part their gear pretty much sucked Medicalist did get a slight upgrade to his chest piece but we can sell it all for 1174 and we did end up keeping their food not to mention we can also ransom samir for 425 so that was a nice profit for taking those guys on we're not going to ransom the rest of these guys though well maybe the looters the looters just kind of suck they upgrade only into 
foot soldiers and I want to have a cavalry army right now because I want to be fast on the map. Dumping off all these looters also boosts our movement speed by I think it was like 0.3. After the battle we also did get a couple upgrades. We can turn this empire peasant into a watchman and the next year after that is a mercenary scout which means he's going to be mounted and so that's going to be nice assuming he does survive for long enough to be able to get that upgrade. We also can turn this expert thug into a master thug. This chest piece looks pretty formidable versus before he was just wearing a scarf. I do like how the master thug skills are the same as the thug skills. I'm not sure if that was intended but yeah the master thug has 20 in all of his proficiencies which that's not the best. Even this crappy low tier watchman has like 60 in proficiencies. I think that was a little bit of an oversight there. You would think the master thug's proficiencies would be a little bit better than that. This is actually weird so I'm gonna do a bit of a test here. They have this girl Laska Willowbark at the tavern and she's really good at medicine. She's completely useless at everything else though for the most part. She's only good at healing. I'm assuming though she's gonna have focus in medicine and I really want someone with focus in medicine so we're gonna pick her up. Which yes unfortunately Medicalist that means our time together has come to an end. We're gonna strip all his gear and give him the row the wrong treatment because yeah this dude just sucks. He does have 60 in roguery and by dumping him we're gonna lose out on his 5% more loot from village raids but he doesn't even like roguery and he doesn't have much focus in it which means it's hard to level it up any further and his skills just really aren't that good in general. And unfortunately we only have four companion slots so sorry Medicalist but yeah you're out. So Alaska is a doctor and she has 60 skill in medicine with two focus points in it. She has this upgrade preventative medicine which increases her HP by 10 which we don't really care about. Self medication is also not really good for the party. It increases characters healing rate by 10% but it only works on her as far as I know. And like we don't really care about her healing rate as we're going to try to keep her back and not send her in the front lines. But the main thing we care about is triage tent. Bonus 20% healing rate increase to the party when stationary on main map. Or she could have walk it off. Bonus 10% healing rate increase to the party when mobile on the main map. I kind of prefer that one mainly just because I don't like being stationary and I like being on the move. But here's where the experiment's going to come into play. So back when we were doing the escort mission we traveled through Ortesia and I checked the tavern and noticed that Marywin the healer was here and she cost 2200 which is way more than any of our companions have costed so far. When I first saw her Menaclis was doing a quest so we couldn't dump him and pick her up and ooh wow she actually sucks. She's only got one focus point in medicine the other girl had two. She does have 40 in scouting though which gives us an extra 2% movement speed at night which is nice. But yeah I don't really care about that I don't think. I'd way rather have the extra focus point in medicine. One thing I did notice that was weird about both of them is they had a lot of their tribute points spec'd into combat stuff and they didn't really seem to care too much about intelligence so maybe they're not gonna be the best medics. I do prefer Laska for now and she also does have a focus point in scouting with 20 skill in it. So if she just gets 5 more in it we can get that upgrade plus 2% party movement at night or we can choose Pathfinder plus 1% party movement during day. But yeah we'll give her over all of Menaclis's gear and I guess we'll give her some throwing weapons as well. Why the heck not and we'll keep around for now at least until we can find a better medic. In that last battle against the forest people we did also get up to 76 throwing so we can now get this upgrade fully armed. One extra thrown weapon per pack which is going to be really nice for our main character. That's going to make it so his harpoons all have 6 stack amount in them. On our quest to find the 10 faction leaders we headed from Jacqueline over to Gallon, where this guy Vorthurd the Vinter has a quest for us to go to Nogrant and kill a bunch of poachers but we can actually leave him one of our companions and 12 men to do it. We'll leave him Bylorn with all of our empire peasants and they should be able to get the quest done for us. At Gallon, we have a quest to bring them a cow and I was heading over to Furton to see if they had a cow for them because in Warbin oftentimes villages would sell you cows when I noticed that Tommond of Furton has a quest for us. I didn't know that you can get quests from small villages. Unfortunately none of our companions have a tactic skill above 15 so we're gonna have to fight this one ourselves. So if we click on the village of Furton there's this option take a walk through the lands and there's a little quest marker here so I was assuming we had to walk around the village and find something but apparently that's not the case and we have to wait for some okay never mind actually I waited for I want to say like two seconds and we failed the quest. Apparently there's some kind of bug with this deserter extortion quest because it says time remaining minus one day which I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be the case. And what? I did a save load and I saw the deserter party it was heading towards Furton, but it didn't even make it there and apparently the quest failed. That's definitely a bug. Like what? They didn't even end up getting raided. The dudes never made it to the village. Well, it is early access and we can definitely expect bugs and actually failing that quest was not a big deal. We only ended up losing relation with I think it was the leader of the village of Furton and we don't really care too much about that. I also checked the village of Hongar to see if they had any quests. They didn't, but Rulin does have a quest. They want us to train some of their troops and yeah, our companions again do not have the skill requirements for 
for it, which is unfortunate. It'd be really nice to just be able to leave a companion here as this is going to be kind of an annoying quest, I think. He doesn't care if a few of them die apparently, but he doesn't want them all to get killed. And I guess he gave us 10 of these borrowed troops, which require 578 XP to level up. That's kind of a lot. I was expecting it to be a bit easier, but even like these thugs require the same amount to upgrade into expert thugs. And not to mention, he said a few could die, but it says in the quest, train troops 0 out of 10. So do we fail the quest if we don't train all of them up? I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of looters around here though. We could try to chase these guys down, but oh man, we're so slow now. That's the downside of having all these troops and prisoners in our party. We were moving at like 8, but now we're moving at 5.6. Well, they got around 330 XP for taking out that group of 15 looters. The only problem is that we can only upgrade them once at a time. At this rate, I think we'd have to take out like 25 more of those looter parties. That does not seem like something we want to do. I will say on the bright side though, one of these mercenary horsemen did level up to a mercenary cavalry, the highest tier for these units, and this guy should be quite the beast. We bought a cow at Praven and we were heading back to Gallon to deliver it to him when we stumbled across this dude, Darethur, who does have a little quest icon by him. Is this one of the faction leaders? Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendriac? It was a victory of the kind that is almost as bad as defeat. I kind of skimmed over it. Something about a battle where he did well, but he was blamed for taking a bunch of losses. So we talked to the leader of one faction. Now we gotta do it nine more times, and yeah, that's gonna be kind of annoying. In order to get around the map quicker, I think we're just gonna abandon this quest, train troops for Ilsecrit of Ruland. First of all, it says we trained up zero troops, which is just not true. We've trained up one already. But the thing about the quest is having that many ground units in a party is gonna slow us down, and we don't have this upgrade yet, Raise the Meek, which is a skill that'd be really useful for the quest, medium XP bonus per day for tier one, two, and three troops. If we had this ability, it'd be much easier to train them up, though it would still be an annoying quest. My gut tells me it's just not something that's gonna be worth, so yeah, we're just gonna dump all these borrowed troops. The veteran borrowed troop, all these Valandian peasants as well, I think. Thug and expert thug. Or actually, if we do that, we'll be over the prisoner limit. Okay, let's not dump everyone for now. And we're gonna ransom off most of these units. We're only gonna hold on to the veteran forester, I think. And man, it kinda sucks to do this, and part of me really doesn't want to, but I think we're gonna dump off all these archer units as well. We now don't need all the food we had, so we'll dump off a few of the grain. We just wanna travel really light, and five grain will last us five days. Part of me also really wants to keep these veteran foresters around, but I know it's gonna take a while for them to join us, and they're not mounted, so again, yeah, we're gonna dump them. They sell for 100 to pop, and that's gonna boost us up to 7.8 movement. With that, we are down to nine units, but we're gonna be able to traverse the map really quickly, and in the next episode, we're really gonna try to get this quest, investigate Nerissi's folly done. We're just gonna focus only on doing that, and also we'll try to do some side quests here and there, but mainly we're just gonna focus on this one. I'm trying to get these episodes out daily though, and with that, I'm gonna end this one. I wanna thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.